All right, well, we're going to go ahead and begin, and anybody else we can just pick up once they join. Just want to thank everybody for joining this afternoon. Again, my name is Roy Barker. I'm with More Diversified Services. And we're going to, uh, as part of our continuing series of plug-in and prosper webinars, we're going to present part two of two of our uh, 10 critical steps to employee retention, and these will cover steps six through 10. For anybody that may have missed our um, last webinar, we did have some technical issues with the, with the internet connection and the sound. So what I have done is I re-recorded it. It's on our YouTube page at MDS Senior Living. And uh, you can go over there and look at the uh, first part on steps one through five if, if you'd like. So this is a slightly different format for those of you who haven't joined us before. What we do is just do a 30-minute format, basically just an information dump. And then uh, if we don't have time for questions, what I encourage you to do is reach out to me directly. You can either uh, give me a call. My number will be published. Or um, you can give me an email at this Roy Barker at m-d-s.com. And I'd be glad to you know, answer any questions or uh, talk over anything that you may have to discuss. And then also, please take just a few minutes at the end of this presentation to fill out just a two-question survey. Um, today's outlines, basically, I'm going to tell you a little bit about more diversified services myself, why employee retention is important, and then a short recap of steps one through five, and then we'll get to the critical steps six through ten. And uh, just go ahead, and if you want to save the date, uh, we are trying to do at least one uh, webinar per month. Our next one will be on May 21st, same time, one central time, and it's, a, again, a 30-minute format, and it'll be on professional selling back to basics. So please save the date and uh, tell anybody that you think may be interested to join us for that one. Just a little bit about uh, MDS, we are a full-service uh, national boutique consulting firm that specializes in senior living and health care. We've been in business for over 40 years, and you can see we address pretty much any issue that could come up in a senior living operation, and, and we do a lot of one-off specialty items as well. So if you have any needs, please share and give us a call. We all, you know, Not only do we deal in the employee retention, but we also have a great program with the shared executive uh, through our retainer agreements. We do market analysis, mystery shopping, and a lot of operational support as well. Again, my name is Roy Barker. I'm the uh, director of special projects here at MDS for probably about the last 15 years. Uh, basically, you know, my my specialties are in finance with operations, expenses, revenues, things like that, and also marketing, you know, trying to help boost occupancy and then uh, employee retention. So what we're going to focus on today is going to be the employee retention part of this. Um, you know, why is it important? Well, number one, it's, it's tough to lose an employee. And there are costs definitely associated with losing the employee. But the other things that we don't think about are the impact on the employee morale with those that are left, uh, still left employed. And then with your customers, or in our case, residents. Um, especially in our case, it is very difficult on our residents to turn over staff. They get used to having somebody that is meeting their needs and then to have to start over again. I think there have been published studies that, you know, once you uh, start the aging process, that uh, change is one of the most difficult things to deal with. So not only the financial cost to the community, but also, you know, these other more intangible costs. And so here are just a few facts uh, to think about. Number one, lower engaged employees are about four times more likely to leave than those that are engaged. Wages and salary, while this is usually the number one, uh, while it's, people think it's the number one reason for leaving, it's not. Usually it doesn't even make the top five. But when you do exit interviews, it's the easiest thing for me to tell you without you know burning bridges and telling you, that you have a crummy operation or that this manager was bad or whatever the reason may be. It's much easier for me just to say, oh, I got offered better money and leave. So when we do exit interviews, we really need to dig in 
to find out, see if we can get down to the heart of uh, why the employee is choosing to leave. Like I said, with all the studies of third parties uh, looking at exit uh, surveys, wages usually don't make the top five and, and usually not even the top ten. The other thing is that there are surveys out that show that about 80% of employees are pushed out. And I don't mean, uh, you know, an involuntary separation. This means that they were pushed out from something that was going on within the company itself, whether it was poor policies, poor management, bad work environment. 80% of the time it was something, you know, that the company was doing or, or an agent of the company in order to uh, spur these employees to want to leave your company. Only about 20% are what we call pulled out or lured with uh, better jobs and better wages. So I guess that gets down to the bottom line is that employee retention is clearly in management's hands. And so, you know, there are a lot of things that we can do to help ourselves. Um, before we get into that, I was going to talk a little bit about the true cost of turnover. Um, even an entry-level employee making $10 an hour it cost about $7,500 to turn those over, turn them over. Management level employees and more uh, what we call certified or, or uh, employees that may have certificates of some type, probably in the 100 to 125 percent of their salary. And then your executive employees and your uh, can be 200 percent of their salary and then technical employees such as programmers which we don't deal with a lot but some of the bigger firms do have IT staff they can cost up to 400 percent of their salary to replace them um, turnover rates in assisted living is published at about 45 percent but a lot of communities operate you know in the hundred percent range and as you work your way up the scale you'll see some uh, memory care and skilled nursing communities that can run in the three to five hundred percent range and that's turning over your employee base three to five times a year so that can be a real stress and strain on other uh, parts of your operation as well then the other thing that we was not mentioned a lot is risk management, that if you are turning over 50% of your employees every year, that means at probably any given point in time, there are 50% of your people are new employees. And so they, uh, they may not know, they may not be fully trained, they may not know your company way, you may not know them very well. So at the end of the day, uh, they can be a huge liability. So let's recap uh, steps one through five. Uh, first one is initial screening. So I just, I'm going to briefly talk about these again. You know, we don't need to skip the in-depth due diligence. The, um, and I'll tell you a story I was hiring not long ago, and I had a, a young lady that was probably in my, uh, probably in the top five of my candidates, and. Uh, I didn't really have to dig for her. Actually, she provided me a lot of information and found out that her her resume, when we interviewed, what she told me in person was different than her resume, which was different from her LinkedIn profile, which was different than her Facebook profile. Not to mention that she, you know, she kind of got all social media on me and, you know, there were some very X-rated things on her Facebook page. I didn't have to go looking for it. It was just stuff that was provided to me. So sometimes doing a little bit of, of digging, you will uh, definitely be surprised with what you turn up. Second thing is orientation. You know, go the extra step. A lot of people, uh, a lot of companies get in a bind, and so somebody walks through the door, they've got a pulse, they said they've had some, uh, they've I've done this type of work before, and so they are, you know, flung into action. And what I what I suggest is taking it slow, making sure they not only have the skills that they say they do, but also you need to orientate them to your company, to the position that they will be in. Everything is done a little bit different, so just take the extra time and get them off to a good start. Uh, next is job specific training, and this should be you know, for every function, and then, like I said, every company and every function will be a little bit different, but we need to make sure that we are training them for the job. 
that we want them to do, not just taking their word for it that they understand and know how. The next one is providing a mentor. And this has gotten to be a very big issue, but this can be very, very helpful because not only can it take some pressure off of the your management, but what it can do is gives a new employee kind of a peer that maybe they don't feel as intimidated to go to when they need help or can't remember something or need a question answered. So it's much easier for them to approach one of their peers than to maybe go to management or executive director level. But then also you can get feedback from the mentor for your you know new or younger employees, maybe what jobs they're doing good uh, and maybe extra training that they may need going forward to help them out. And then of course that leads us into the ongoing training and you know invest in your employees like you know number one like your job depends on it like your company depends on it invest in like your residents depend on it so there are a lot of great reasons one of my favorite uh, sayings that I love to quote is the CFO that walks into the CEO's office and says uh, you know how can we continue to train our employees and have them you know leave our company and go to our competitors the CEO calmly replies you know how can how can we not train our employees and have them stay here so it's very poignant that yes we will have some that will be lured off but you know the company will only be better off the company the employee and the residents will only be better off with highly trained individuals so excuse me there so let's takes us to step 6 through 10 and what can we do? Number one, we can create opportunities for advancement. We can challenge our employees, make sure that we're praising them, and develop an awesome company culture, and really get to know the employees. And that's that's very important. It, it kind of leads into uh, a lot of these different categories if we take the time to get to know who they are. So first one is create opportunities for advancement. Like we said, you know, an investment in the employees, it's an investment in the company, it's an investment in your residents. We want, want to in, encourage the promotion from within and sometimes we overlook that and we need to take a hard look at you know who we've got, what their aptitudes are and see if we can't encourage them. You know the best thing you, you can do is have an employee that already knows your system and your residents and have them move up in your company. Not only is it good for them, but it also shows others that they, that they can do the same thing. You can start this out too by providing career counseling, self-assessment tools, and career management tools to your employees. And what this might help them do is see that there are other opportunities that they can aspire to. <coughs> Excuse me. And what it would take to get to that next level. You can provide, and I probably got these switched around, I wish I talked about this first, is uh, having access to behavioral assessment tools such as uh, Myers-Briggs or the DISC system is we need to know as managers, we need to know the personalities and how different employees respond to, to different things. So it would be good not only in order to manage our employees correctly, but also, you know, what kind of aptitude do they have for other jobs that we may have in our company. Uh, the other thing too is we get really hung up on, on providing training for a job that somebody is in right now, but what we need to think about is for those, you know, that we feel are capable of moving up in the company is providing training for future assignments that they may have or being able to send them to seminars or Get, gain certificates, uh, you know, whether it's online or in person, but, you know, what can we do to train them to move up in our company? Provide executives, um, you know, and managers training on developing relationship and in co coaching. This is really important because I think, you know, a lot of times we look at resumes and we try to hire for skill and even if we have a very skilled employee, if they don't fit into our company team or company model, then they become a distraction 
and, and maybe even a destruction for destructive force within our workforce. And so, what we could do is, uh, you know, we want to to hire a little bit more for attitude. And um, you know, it was put to me one time that attitude is like a virus, and you have to think about when you're when you're interviewing people is. Do you want somebody to catch this person's attitude? Do you want that attitude to permeate through your workforce? So what we can do is if we make our manager sensitive to developing and coaching, what we can do is take somebody that may be a little short on skill but has a great attitude and then give them the training and provide them with the coaching necessary in order to bring their skill level up and then now we have developed an employee that has an awesome attitude and now they've got great skills that fit um, you know the needs of their position and the company and then also to encourage uh, you know formalized education offering tuition plans and uh, you know trying to get the message out that uh, you don't always have to be at an entry level position. There are ways that you can go back. There are training opportunities um, in order to not only better the person, you know, we want to help our employees to be better people and have better lives, but also they can become a bigger asset to our company. And then define career paths and requirements. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, how do I go from an entry-level job to an executive director, a regional manager. And a lot of them don't even understand that there are, uh, in the big companies, that we have regional directors and corporate jobs that could be available to them. So, you know, really sit down for those who are interested and those who you feel have the aptitude for it. Sit down and talk to them. How do you get from A to B? and what needs to be done and how, you know, y'all can work together with the employee to get that done. And then the other thing is, you know, don't have artificial barriers such as time limits. Uh, you know, a lot of people get timed out in positions because they have to be here for, you know, two or three years, and by that point they've already moved on. So you have to uh, evaluate each employee differently to make sure that you can move them, you know, through the system as quick as possible. The other thing is challenging employees. Um, you know, we need to set the stage for this by uh, providing all employees the bigger picture of what's going on, either at the community or at the company. Uh, sometimes we get so focused on getting them in one job that they don't understand. It's just like a receptionist at a uh, at any retirement community they go to. They don't usually understand the importance of their job. They are the first person that people will meet when they come through the door have to be smiling and have a great big personality. But if we don't sit down and tell them this, that, you know, you could be the difference between somebody wanting to live at our community versus going to a competitor, they don't understand that. So let's set the stage by, you know, kind of showing them how they interact with the big picture. Uh, giving temporary managerial assignments if you have a, a you know, a manager that's out on vacation or has to take a leave of absence instead of getting another manager to try to cover that uh, you know see if there's an employee within that peer group that can step up and not you know perform their job as well as taking on some of the managerial responsibilities while their manager is out this will be a great test to you know help them see if they are ready to move up to uh, see what skills they may need to brush up on in order to be ready to move up. Uh, Cross-train identified employees, and I say this carefully because, you know, we can't just do this with everybody, but we want to, um, you know, if we have somebody that's doing a great job in another department, we may want to get them some cross-training um, time, and that way maybe they can't move up in their, their line of command, but maybe they would be eligible to take over, you know, another group. So let's look for other opportunities and not get locked into thinking if they are in uh, in this one department that that's where they have to stay. They may uh, have aspirations of moving out of that as well. Uh, give one-off projects, and I should have underlined in bold of substance here, to suitable employees in development because, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes it's like, 
uh, here's a big project we've got to see if you can get the you know trash out of the building out to the dumpster and uh, uh, employees will see right through that you need to try to involve them in in employees that will I mean in uh, projects that will challenge them and you know get them to think outside the box also it's a great idea because you may get some fresh ideals from you know an employee that you wouldn't have otherwise solicited it from you want to align their daily routine with you know the strategic and strategic and strategy initiatives you know it's kind of like what I was talking about in the beginning is you know we want to a receptionist may define her job as you know answering the phone and, and greeting people that come in and what we need to align that with is hey you know what you are the first face that people see when they walk in here so you have a bigger job than just answering the phone and that goes for every employee every employee of every community and this goes for all companies should be a salesperson for that community no matter if it's a housekeeper dietary always big smiles always saying hello uh, because you never know who is looking or why they're there solicit ideals from employees and, and get them involved on committees uh, a lot of times management gets uh, gets hung up on you know having other managers on committees and assigning everything to another manager Take some of these employees that you feel have a good aptitude and get them involved in these committees. Like I said, that you don't, you can't even imagine the great ideals that come out of the employees, you know, kind of where the rubber meets the road, the people that have that resident contact. They can give you, you know, a lot of good feedback and maybe even have some great ideals to help improve the organization. And then this, uh, you know, we need to appreciate everyone's efforts, especially as we're growing talent, is we need to, you know, allow them room to take a risk. We need to allow them some room for learning, uh, for hopefully much success, little failure, but growth is, you know, we need to not make it where everybody is so scared or on edge that they're afraid they're going to fail, uh, that they're they're scared to try. You know, we need to encourage everybody to try. You know, it's it's managed risk. You know, we don't want to set somebody up to fail. We want to kind of help them through the project or through the task, but uh, we do have to understand that people are going to make mistakes. Praising employees. Uh, be proactive. As managers, sometimes we get in that habit of looking for um, bad. You know, we're always trying to find what somebody didn't do. But look, we need to turn that around and let's look for the good. Go out and really, um, really talk it up. Really find the things that employees are doing good and don't be scared to tell them about it. We need to be very clear and specific. Uh, you know, not just, hey, you did a great job, but it's like, uh, you know, Mrs. Smith is very, um, you know, was very difficult, wasn't feeling good the other day, but you really handled her great in the way that you took care of her, and, you know, we appreciate it. Deliver it sooner rather than later. Um, you know, on the spot is always the best, but if a note's been passed up, from a resident or their family, you know, about a worker, get that out as soon as possible. Unfortunately, as time goes by, it kind of dilutes the um, emphasis of telling them that they did a good job. So, uh, you know, this needs to be passed down from, you know, executive director to management level to, you know, everybody needs to know about a comment and everybody can uh, praise an employee and then share whatever was positive about the experience, you know, you can share that with other employees so maybe they will have as good of outcomes. Sincerity, it's a must. Employees see right through if, if you're not being honest. So, uh, you know, don't try to pull one over on them and praise somebody either for something that they didn't do or didn't do good enough, uh, you know, they understand that. So let's be honest and sincere about it. Small rewards mean a lot. You know, we don't have to send everybody to, on, on vacation to Hawaii. Of course, I'm sure they would love it and they wouldn't turn that down. But, you know, sometimes having a cupcake party, sometimes if you're having a stand-up, giving away a gift certificate, you know, for 10 or 20 bucks, uh, you know, maybe an hour off of work, whatever you choose to do, small things mean a lot. 
people just want recognition. Uh, it doesn't always have to be the big stuff. And make it public if possible. Like I said, doing it at a stand-up or if you have a monthly, you know, larger meeting or if you have a company conference, those are times to recognize employees in front of their peers and, uh, you know, really show them that their efforts count and that it's being noticed. <laughs> and, the, and the refrain from the constructive but, and that, you know, a lot of times we get into that habit is, hey, you did an awesome job, but, you know, you could have done this or should have done that. So let's just give that praise and let it go. We can uh, be constructive and give them uh, hints on what they might could do different or better at another time. Uh, develop an awesome company culture. Uh, what we need to do there is, you know, clarify, communicate, and most of all, you have to live your vision. You have to uh, live the company mission and values. Employees, it starts at the top. The, the employees at the bottom see how management acts, and they emulate that. So you have to be very clear about it, number one, but you also have to live it. Uh, stay focused on the customer and stay focused on your employees and they see that they if they see that customer is number one to you then they will make customer number one but if we um, you know if we have a lot of backbiting and back talking and say one thing in front of a customer and say something else to the employees they pick up on that that the customer is not that important so just have to remember what our mission is to serve our customers be generous with the praise and rewards compensation you know, let's make it fun to work at the company. Uh, sometimes you can do is take on community projects that are near and dear to the employees, and you can solicit ideals, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe you know somebody is doing a, you know, walk for heart health or something else. You know, maybe you organize a uh, team of your other staff people to take part in this, you know, it could be Habitat from Humanity, it could be many things, but just think about what's important to your employees and that way they want to get involved as well. Uh, cultivate the feeling of family with customers and employees. I think that's the biggest thing I get uh, from doing mystery shopping is when you walk into a community, you get a feel immediately of if it's a warm, inviting place or if it's a cold, uh, non-caring place. So really uh, stress that, that, you know, the residents are family and employees are family and we have to treat everybody well. And then make sure that integrity is at the top of that list. You know, we have to continue to keep our integrity. And I can't stress it enough, management has to live this every day. No two ways about it. It's just the most important. Uh, really get to know your employees. You know, we've got to go but beyond the name, rank, and serial number. Uh, when I used to work for another company, I had uh, people underneath me. Other managers were always surprised that I knew you know, I knew their wives, I knew their kids, I knew who played baseball, basketball, football, I knew what was going on. And you don't have to, to grill or quiz or be, uh, you know, intrusional. Sometimes if you just be quiet and listen, you pick up a lot. And um, I just think it's important because I've, I've dealt with a lot of companies and when we sit down and start talking about um, you know, employee turnover, well, who are you turning over? And they don't know. You know, they know her name was Jane, and she, you know, been here for six months, but, you know, they don't know anything about her. And so sometimes what we can do is the more we know about employees, we may be able to adjust schedules or help them in other ways, um, you know, so they don't become a turnover statistic. Find out what's impo important to each employee personally. You know, what do they care about? not only, you know, outside things, but about their job. What are they interested in? Hold stay interviews. You know, we, we do try to hold exit interviews, but we never think about what are the people who are here, what are they thinking? It's a great way for us to gather intelligence about what's going on. What is the employee like? What could we change? So, you know, take the time to hold those stay interviews with our current employees. 
uh, host gatherings off premise and outside of work hours. This is really important. You know, it's always nice to have a little barbecue, and when you have people working 24 hours, it, it's a little more difficult. But if you can have them at different times, different days, if you make it uh, consistent, then everybody will, you know, eventually get to come, and it, it's the best way to build, uh, you know, a camaraderie amongst your staff. But it's also a great way to get to know people and, and what they're really all about. And the last thing here is, you know, we have to be. We have to be visible, have to be engaged, have to be approachable, and you have to be genuine. Uh, those are just very important. I, I always think about, like, at the executive director level is that, you know, you have to be the mayor of the community. And it's not only with the staff, but with residents. You know, you have to know everybody, you have to shake hands. You can't get so caught up in your mission that you're holding a notebook or paper in front of your face and zipping down a hall and not taking the time to praise your employees. And this goes for residents as well, that, you know, we have to know them and what their situation is um, so we can talk about them and talk to them intelligently uh, as we go down the hall and not just kind of be um, in our own little world. So just take a few minutes. Uh, I want to recap, you know, the 10 critical steps to increase employee retention is initial screening, orientation, uh, job-specific training, provide a mentor, ongoing training, create opportunities for advancement, challenge our employees, praise our employees, develop an awesome company culture, and really get to know our employees. If we can do these 10 things, uh, I think you would be surprised at what an impact that you would make on your employee turnover. So, you know, my, my saying has kind of become, uh, you know, let's make your company an employer of choice, not an employer of last resort. And as I said, if you don't mind, save the date and tell your friends and neighbors. Uh, you know, we're going to do uh, our next webinar on May 21st for at 1 p.m. Central Time, professional selling, back to the basics. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give me an email or give me a call. I'd be glad to discuss it with you. Thank you so much, and I hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon.